the internet, Bill from Bill Loud and Science here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a bubbling, oozy, gooey, chemical reaction lava lamp. Shh, I mean, mwah. Oh, oh man. Oh, okay, that's better. Awesome. Welcome to the laboratory, everybody. My name is Bill from Bill Loud and Science. And before I tell you about the spooky reaction we're gonna work on today, I have to give a special shout out. I was told that Remington is going to be celebrating his sixth birthday this Sunday. So I wanna give a huge happy birthday shout out to Remington. Give a big high five to, well, okay, maybe not. We better be careful, but happy birthday. I hope it's an awesome one. Today, we're going to be working on a chemical reaction. Chemical, chemical reaction. reaction! We're not gonna worry what that means just yet. We'll get to that later in the video. The most important thing that we have to talk about today is being clean and being safe. Find a space like the kitchen table or the counter where it's okay to spill and make a mess and it's easy to clean up again. While I was setting up and preparing for this video, I've already had a couple of spills. Also, because we're handling chemicals, the other consideration is we always want to be safe. All of the chemicals we're gonna to use today are safe to get on our skin. We can wash them off, nothing bad will happen, but if we get those chemicals on our fingers and then we get them in our eyes, we're gonna have a bad time. So, please be very careful that we don't get any of the chemicals that we use today in our eyes, in our ears, in our mouth, and especially in our no, no. So, what are the ingredients we need to drive this spooky reaction? Well, I've already measured out some of the liquids we're gonna need. I've measured out a half cup each of cooking oil and vinegar and just plain old water. And I pre-measured about a half cup of each of these. And you might be saying, well, wait a minute though, I see that the vinegar is a different color. I have added just a drop of food coloring to the vinegar. The last ingredient we need to drive our chemical reaction is another classic chemical used in home science, and that's going to be baking soda. Baking soda or sodium bicarbonate is a base, and it's gonna react really well with our vinegar. The final thing you're gonna need is a tall, clear cup or glass. I've got a jar here I'm gonna use. And in order to make our experiment light up, if you've got one, it would be very handy to have a Flashlight. We've got all the ingredients we need. It's time to make this chemical reaction happen. The first thing I'm gonna do is take three big scoops of baking soda and put them down in the bottom of an empty jar or cup. Into our baking soda, we're gonna add all of the water that we've measured out, about one half cup of water. And then we can just give it a slow shake, kind of a little shimmy, a little bit of a stir, a little bit of a... Okay, anyways, the next thing we're going to add in is the oil. We're going to notice that when we add the oil, the oil does not mix with the water. The oil is actually going to float on top of the baking soda and water solution. That's important and we'll talk about why that is in a couple of minutes. But for now, it is time to make this reaction happen. The last ingredient we've got is our vinegar with a little bit of food coloring in it. We wanna either pour really carefully and slowly or you could also use a spoon or a dropper to just get a little tiny bit at a time and you're gonna drop it into the jar. And almost immediately, you're going to notice the sign of a chemical reaction that we are looking for. We are looking for bu 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 bubbles. <laughs> These bubbles are happening because of a chemical reaction between the vinegar and the baking soda that is producing these colorful gas bubbles. For our last step, I've zoomed us way in because the last thing we want to do 
is we want to get a little more of that chemical reaction going. And then we're going to turn on our flashlight. Let's turn off all the lights in the laboratory. And then if we hover the flashlight over the top of our chemical reaction, we are going to get a glowing, bubbling lava lamp. Pretty awesome, right? So, what's the science? Well, the first concept we have to understand is the concept of density. Density is a measurement of the amount of stuff in a given amount of space. And we can compare that measurement of that amount of stuff in that amount of space to another amount of stuff that's in another amount of space. <laughs> For example, take the jars that I have here. I have two jars. They're the same size. They both hold the same amount of stuff. But in one jar, I put five ping pong balls. And in the other jar, I put some beads. I don't know, maybe like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 192, 193, there's probably like a thousand. And we know also that those ping pong balls are mostly full of air. They're mostly empty. Whereas this jar not only has more beads or more spheres in it, but they are solid, which means that there's not very much empty space in this jar. We would say in terms of spheres that this jar is less dense than this jar. We can say the same thing about liquids. I have two cups here that are both the same size. In one cup, I have oil, and in the other cup, I have water. The molecules of oil are actually bigger than the molecules of water, just like our ping pong balls and our beads. And so in the same amount of space, there's going to be less molecules of oil. We would say that oil is less dense than water. And what's cool is, because oil is less dense than water, if we put water into a container and we add some oil, the oil does not mix and it floats on top of the water. Likewise, vinegar molecules are also heavier than oil. Oil is less dense than vinegar. So when we put our vinegar droplets in, the vinegar sinks through the oil and down into the water. The second concept we have to understand is the concept of a chemical reaction. Chemical reaction! A chemical reaction is when you mix two chemicals together and you get something brand new. There are certain signs we can look for to see if our chemicals are producing a reaction. So here I've got the vinegar and the baking soda, and when we mix these two together, we're gonna see one of those signs. And this is a classic sign of a chemical reaction. When you mix together baking soda and vinegar, you get gas bubbles. Gas bubbles. So that's all there is to this bubbling, spooky reaction. You can let it go until the bubbles have finished, and then you can use some warm, soapy water to clean it out and start all over again. It's been awesome hanging out with you, and I hope to see everybody again really soon. Boy, you know, these bubbles, they do, uh, they're kind of relaxing. They, they do kind of make one just a little bit, um, a little bit, uh, a little...